we're gonna get out of here. We spent just one night here last night, and and uh, it was very nice. It's crowded, but very nice. We just met uh, three nice Irish women who are here to swim, much braver than us. Only Luca went swimming. None of us went swimming, but they gave us a bunch of good tips. So, and they gave us their phone number. So if we need to call somebody for advice, we've got we've got an insider who's uh, gonna able to give us some advice. I'm excited about that. But today we need to uh, just go find a place for the cats to roam. You know, we we're hoping this was gonna be the spot, but too many people. Too many visitors, too many tours. It's the weekend, so yeah, it didn't turn out to be the good cat place as we had imagined, but it is a really nice spot though. A lot of locals come here. This is very unusual weather as, as far as Ireland's concerned. We suspected that when we got here yesterday, that it wasn't gonna be sunny like this all the time. So, and that's another reason why everybody's out. Everybody's like, this is our time to go swimming. <laughs> We're like, the water's too cold. We're not going swimming. But everyone who came got on their bathing suits. They went in the water. They were out there frolicking, swimming. But not us. We just got our feet wet. Luca. Luca goes in pretty much any water. He kind of enjoys the uh, temporal paralyzation that, that gives him when he first hits that cold water but that's what happens when you're nine years old so anyways today we're gonna go find another spot that we can let the cats out loose it's gonna rain for a couple of days tomorrow hopefully it gets better hopefully get a few more sunny days here and there I am expecting rain to be sort of the norm gloomy rainy weather to be more the norm so yeah we'll just uh We'll see how lucky we get. So this is our second day driving on the left side of the road. I want to just give you some of my quick opinions about what it's like for somebody who's never driven on the left side of the road in a left-hand drive car. It is, first of all, at the beginning anyways, it still kind of is freaky as hell. It is, you constantly feel like because we're so conditioned to having oncoming traffic on the left side, especially on a two lane road like this. When I see car coming from the other end and I'm on the left side, my instinct is to think, oh my gosh, we're gonna crash. But then of course, if I swerve to the right, if I go on the right side where my instinct tells me to do, that is how you would crash. So you have to constantly remember until you're used to it which on the second day I'm not quite used to it yet, but it's a little less tense today than yesterday. Look at all these cars on the right. And th these two lane roads are like crazy because there's zero shoulder. Instead of having, and the road doesn't fall off, it's like the hedges that are grown right up to the edge of the road. So you can't see it, but to my left, since I'm driving on the left side in, in a left hand drive car, these hedges are just zooming past me, going super, super fast. And it feels like if I just stick my hand out, I can brush along the hedges with my hand, which you can only experience if you're driving with a left-hand drive vehicle in a left lane, in a left side driving country. In a normal right-hand drive vehicle here, you would be on the other side, closer to the center divider. So this is really freaky. And the other thing too is making a left-hand turn. I just imagine I'm making a left-hand turn from a from a one-way road to another one-way road. So that's fine. I just stay on the left side the whole time. Now making a right-hand turn is I'm like you would. It just all flipped around, waiting for the vehicles, waiting for the the oncoming traffic to pass. Make your right turn, but then stay on the right side. So that's something to get used to. And then yet another thing, driving in Europe, you have a whole bunch of these roundabouts. And in the rest of Europe, the roundabouts are counterclockwise. The roundabouts here are clockwise. So as you come up to a roundabout, you 
you really have to think about which way you're supposed to go. If you're going in which part of the roundabout you're leaving. It's easier when there are other cars already in the roundabout, you just kind of follow them. You know, it's really something you have to process in your head, at least, like I said at the beginning, until you get used to it, that going clockwise in the roundabout, staying to the right of the roundabout, if you're not exiting, and then going to the left of the roundabout if you are exiting. Basically, everything's a mirror image. I think it'll get better. We're going to be here long enough. We're going to be here long enough for me to get used to this. So I'm thinking that it's going to get better every day that I drive more. But still, so far right now, like in the back of my mind is uh, is being messed with. Do you have your mask? Yeah. Alright, so we left that last spot. We're going to get ready for a couple days of rain. So we're actually going to go hit up a Irish Lidl for the first time. It's windy, sorry. Let's check out what they've got at the Irish Lidl. First things first, onions. These are the best. Little <laughs> onions. Oh, what about this? It's like America Week. <laughs> Barbecue Week. Barbecue marshmallows? Do we need some of these? No. You sure? Yeah. Tomato and red pepper relish. That's different. Sweet barbecue sauce. Burger sauce. Okay. Keep looking. Why is this called Irish lettuce? Oh, spring onions. Okay, that's Irish lettuce. Spring onions? Huh? Spring onions. Oh, I need a bag. Luca's favorite. Mature cheddar. That's a medium. Okay. No, he likes the mature. Okay. Oh, this extra mature. All right, we tried that too. Sharp and extra sharp. We're gonna eat it. Oh, we're more excited about the Irish cheese than the uh, French cheese. Okay, here we go. This is where it gets serious. Twelve for how many? Twelve for how many is that? Eight. It's four. There's oh yeah, it's eight. Should we get eight? I'm not gonna drink any. What? Yeah, You're not gonna not have any? You? They're gonna make you leave. <laughs> oh, can you put this somewhere? Well, we have the hazy IPA. Oh. Yeah, it's six euros per liter. The classic pale ale. California IPA. I don't know. Seems like we should just stick to Guinness. That's three euros per liter. MGD is more expensive than Guinness. You can tap the Rockies. You can tap the Rockies here. Fridge pack. Yeah, I know. So is Budweiser. Cilantro. Look at look. Three kinds. Irish mature oh, yeah. white cheddar, Irish mature red cheddar, <laughs> extra mature cheddar. Does Wait, it, is it extra mature? Doesn't doesn't much all mean old? Oh, yeah, extra mature. Doesn't much all mean old? Yeah, it's aged. It's sharp cheddar and extra sharp cheddar. Real raviolis. Real raviolis. Real okay, go in your seat. Oh yeah, here. Ice cream. Ice cream. Don't look too excited. Okay. Okay, now that we're on the highway, or they call it the motorway here in Ireland, and I want to add another weird thing that you might experience if you're driving here, is when you're on the left side of the highway and there are multiple lanes, then you're on the slow lane, which here is the leftmost lane. And then people are passing you on the right. That feels really weird. It feels like you're constantly being passed by people 
from the slow lane because that's what we're used to. We're used to being on the right hand side, people passing us on the left. So now, every time somebody passes me on the right, I feel like, oh no, I need to get to the right. But no, you gotta get over that. Stay on the left. Let people pass you on the right. Come in. Are you happy to be running around? Okay, run not right this second. You're not running around. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Scared of your brother. Your brother, the attacker. Do I have cookies in my teeth? I just had a cookie. Half a cookie. We found these big chocolate chip cookies at the Irish Lidl. Pretty good, actually. Four big ones for two euros. So now we came to this little sort of campground kind of thing behind a restaurant next to a town called, what's this town called? Castle Rock or something? castle something I assume there's a castle somewhere in the area and it's uh, 15 euros there's water over there and then each of these four or five sites have a electricity plug um, you just dump your gray at the edge of the field he says no black water dump unfortunately so we can't empty our toilet we just have to empty it somewhere else after we leave. But it's really nice. It's got these great big eucalyptus trees that smell really cool. But you get used to it. It was really strong when we first got here, but you get used to the smell. No, I don't even smell it anymore. When we used to live in Santa Barbara in the uh, Goleta area, there used to be giant eucalyptus trees all over the place but we don't see them that much anymore. It was nice to be camping next to them. Mainly we came here because we saw on Google Satellite that it's like this field and it's pretty safe for the cats to uh, just meander around, which they've been doing all afternoon because ever since we boarded the ferry, maybe even before that, let's see, before we came here, the day before, um, the whole day, we didn't board the ferry until almost 9 o'clock. And uh, the whole day, the cats were inside the van. And then they had to stay in the van that night. And then the, the whole day, the next day, they were in the van as we uh, got to Ireland. And then the spot that we were at this morning... It was just way too busy. Too many cars driving to go see that uh, lighthouse. So they didn't get to run free. They had to be on long leashes, which is, uh, you know, they're not happy about it to say the least. So when we first got here, we had to make sure that it was cool. But once we decided to stay, once we figured it was nice, we let them loose. And they just been having a ball here. They love it. And then we met a nice, Irish couple that's camping right next to us, right here. Michael and his wife. Didn't get her name yet. But they live just outside of Dublin. And he owns a uh, jewelry shop on Grafton Street, which is a really fancy shopping area. Supposedly the fifth most expensive shopping area in the world. So. We're going to go check it out, but we're probably not going to buy anything on Grafton Street in Dublin. So we're going to go. We're going to go to Dublin. This is for you. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Did Michael... Oh my gosh. Thank you. Okay. I'm supposed to try your pour. Oh. Yeah, go ahead and try it. See if it's nice. Okay. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. Tell Michael thanks, and I'll, I'll thank him again when he comes back.
<laughs> Michael ordered me a Guinness and she brought it over. A real Guinness, your first one. A real draft from a pub. My first Irish pub Guinness. Hey, you have to try it. Here's Marlene trying her first Irish Guinness. You had a sweet mustache for a second. I have a sweet mustache always. Don't say you don't like it. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not her favorite. But wow. Like I said, Michael and uh, his wife. Sorry, I didn't get your name yet, Michael's wife. I will when you guys come back. They went over to get a, get a, get a pint. And I didn't expect this, but he ordered me a pint. Because we were over here, I got um, Guinness drafts from the store. I got an eight pack, you know, the tall one in the can with the little ball inside. And he uh, he taught me how to pour it properly. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what you want to see. You want to see that foam. Dan, yes. You almost messed up, yeah. Dan. Oh yeah. That does look like it came straight from the from the tap. Okay. Huh? So now I know how to do it. And uh I was just saying to him, then you not need to do a taste test between that Guinness that I bought from the store and a proper pint that's poured at a pub. And I haven't had one yet, so it's only my second day here in Ireland. And of course, he ordered me one and asked the, asked the uh, restaurant person, the waitress, to bring it over to me. Super nice. Super nice couple from Dublin. Does a lot of traveling. They uh, hope to semi-retire in the next year or so, so we've been just having a good time chatting with them. It's nice to have neighbors that uh, that are cool and that are nice that we can share stories with. Acorns keep falling, so it's a good thing we have the awning out. It's not for rain or sun right now. It's just for acorns. Yeah, look at that dark Anyways, the sun's gonna set. So, so far, Ireland has been awesome. Cheers. We're going to be in trouble. We're going to be drinking a lot of Guinness, I suspect, while we're here. We better get out to do some more wild camping boondocking soon, because I think being in uh, near a city is going to be dangerous. One more, or two more nights, and then we're out. Yeah. Whew.